Welcome back. This is episode 20 of the My Pet Care video show. In today's show, we'll learn about demodectic mange in dogs and we'll enjoy another smile with Simon's cat. We'll watch a beagle learning to sit and down at a distance. We'll learn something about kidney failure in cats. And I'll offer you my quick pet care tip for this episode. I'm John Sheridan, and this is the show that helps everyone with an interest in the management and care of companion animals, especially pet owners just like you, to keep your animals fit, happy, and healthy members of the family. A number of skin diseases in dogs are caused by parasitic mites. Different mites can cause quite different symptoms, and one of them, a mite called demodex, may initially cause few or no symptoms or result in a patchy, localized hair loss around the eyelids and the mouth, and sometimes on the body, the legs, and the feet. If untreated, it can progress into a much more serious skin problems. Here's a clip in which Dr. Jeff Glass, a vet in California, tells us more about demodectic mange. Demodex is a parasitic disease caused by a mite called Demodex or Demodex canis. Uh, it's, a, it's an inflammatory disease where this mite is found in the hair follicles and when, they, when something suppresses the body's immune system, these mites will then start to multiply and when they multiply, it will cause their hair to fall out. I think the most important thing for clients to know is that Demodex is a disease that's not contagious directly from one dog to another. A lot of times people are worried when they have, then the dog has Demodex, is it going to be transmitted? The way that they get it is from their mother. It's usually transmitted in the first few days of life. When the pups start to suckle on the mom, they'll often get that mite. That's why it's often found around the face and it's often found in the front feet. It can be found anywhere in the body. So what happens is that many dogs will have this mite living in their hair follicles and usually what will happen is it will just sit there in the hair follicles and not cause any real problems at all. If something suppresses their immune system, which can be as simple as them having worms and parasites, which many puppies will have, uh, this can then cause this mite to now start to multiply and grow and when it does multiply that's when it causes the symptoms and causes the problems. Usually a healthy dog that even if they've been exposed to that mite and have that mite in their hair follicle will not show any signs at all. The symptoms of, of uh, Demodex can be very variable. Sometimes it can just be a very small patch of hair loss, which sometimes people can just confuse from a scratch, and it can be just a small area of hair loss in any part of the body, and uh, usually those are the much milder forms. It can become much more serious where we see dogs that can have hair loss in multiple patches all over its body or even the entire body. When they get secondary infection from this mite because their immune system is down, they can get secondary bacterial infections which can then result in scabs all over the body, crusting, and at that stage a lot of the times the dogs will be itchy and scratching. Because there are many causes of uh, hair loss in a dog, you want to make sure that your dog truly does have Demodex. Diagnosing Demodex is a relatively simple procedure where your veterinarian may want to do a skin scraping where he'll scrape a part of the skin, look it under the microscope, and then he will see the mite in various stages. If he sees that, it confirms the diagnosis, so it's not a difficult disease to diagnose. As far as treatment is concerned for Demodex, for localized when you have a very small area, if it's a young dog with a small area, sometimes treatment is not necessary. There are topical ointments that you can put on a dog which may or may not help to make it uh, resolve quicker. With generalized Demodex or if you have Demodex in an older dog, then probably in most cases treatment would be a good idea to uh, resolve the problem quicker and prevent it from getting worse. Now let's smile with a pet for this episode. It's Simon's cat and a squirrel. Now for the website search for this episode. Now let's take a look at a dog trainer in Hawaii teaching a beagle to sit down, to sit and down at a distance.
right, the next one, do a remote sit, move, and then do another remote sit and recall. my quick pet care tip for this episode. Chronic kidney failure is one of the most common conditions seen in the older cat. It's a particularly serious problem because by the time signs of renal failure are noticed there may have been a loss of up to three quarters of normal kidney function. Suspicious signs include drinking more than usual, frequent urination, weight loss and sometimes vomiting or loss of appetite. Here's a clip about kidney failure in cats produced by the PDSA. Slightly older cats, which is called chronic renal failure. And what that is, is a disease where the kidneys aren't working quite as efficiently as they should do. And what kidneys are is a sort of filtering mechanism. So they filter out the toxins. And what happens with kidney failure is they don't work as well. So the toxins actually accumulate in the pet's body. And we do a simple test just to see how many of those toxins are actually retained in the cat's bloodstream. So I can work out just from those simple tests whether a cat's got a problem with its kidneys or not. And the other thing as well, which is very useful, is a urine test. We put a little dipstick in the urine and that can tell us whether the pet's a diabetic, whether it's got a problem with its bladder, lots of a whole different set of things. And it's always amazing, really, when you think about it, all those tiny minor things of science and how they can help people like me in all the work that I do. So what's my quick pet care tip? Well, it's this. If you have an elderly cat in your family and you become aware that he or she is drinking or urinating more than usual, losing her appetite, or generally appearing unwell, have a word with your local veterinary practice. Your vet may recommend urine or blood tests, an x-ray or some other diagnostic procedure. What's important is to find out for sure whether or not there is a problem which needs treatment. The sooner it's diagnosed, the quicker it can be dealt with. Well, that's about it for now. I'm John Sheridan, and this is the My Pet Care video show. See you next time. Mm -hmm.